first thing I want you to notice is what we got going on with this dock. Obviously, we have a point of lily pads right here. As you follow that down, you see this dock sitting right over here. So I've got a main lake point. This is the main lake right here. This dock is the first dock that leads into this big bay, big creek arm on this lake right here. So you got main lake point. There's going to be some grass up here. You can kind of see some of the hay grass on the bank, but there's submerged grass as well. And the first dock leading into a major creek arm. So what I'm going to do right now to start this process is I'm going to ease up here and stay at a safe distance as far away as I can while making a cast that lands very soft on the very front corner of this dock. That's the first place I need to fish, the very front corner of this dock. So guys, one of the most important parts about dog fishing is going to be noise. Noise is a big deal. You're going to have to get at times really close to these fish on these dogs. So it's important that you be as quiet as you can. I like to turn my trolling motor down to a three or four rate as much as possible. Hopefully you saw that cast, but that cast landed right next to that post on the front edge and it landed really soft. So now I've let that bait sit down there for a minute. Got my shaky head out. That's the bait I picked up was a shaky head. I'm gonna go ahead and shake that. I really like fishing that shaky head around the edges of these docks. I think it's maybe my most effective bait. That and the wacky worm both. Uh, we've got a little wind rippling into this dock right now, so noise isn't as much of an issue. And that makes the wacky worm a little harder to fish around these edges, so that's why I've got the shaky head going. Long pitch, right to the corner, nice soft landing. That is very important. Now, I'm gonna fish this whole front edge of this dock okay as quietly as I can because a lot of times there will be fish hanging out on the edge and I don't want to get go straight into skipping up under the dock or fish in the back corners because if there's any fish sitting on that front edge I don't want to get my boat too close and spook them before I've had a chance to make a cast at them so I'm gonna go ahead and fish this whole front edge before I move in one thing that's important is shade. So if the shade was pointing from this side and this side was shady, I'd want to go ahead and fish this side first as well. But right now the shade is directly over the top of it, so there really is no shade angle. The shade's directly under the dock. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that. I can kind of fish it whichever side I want to first. This is a good dock. It's got good depth on it. Like I said, it's off the side of this point. It's got some grass around it. I'm sitting in nine and a half foot of water right here where my boat is and I've moved in close now to the dock. So now we're going to go ahead and start getting up underneath that dock. Skipping the old shaky head up under there pretty good ways. I feel a cross member. Okay, just slid off that cross member. You got to be careful of those cross members on the dock. They'll get you hung up. You got to ease through there so you kind of know where all the cross members are. So I'll skip up under the front edge of this dock as much as I can. I want to get as far up under there as I can from as many different angles as I can. That one actually went all the way to the back side of it went through. So I'm gonna cover this whole left side on this cast here. That's really good. Not getting bit on the old shaky head. Let's pick up the jig and give that a shot. As you can see, that jig skips so well. Such a good jig to skip. That six inch hybrid jig is just a really good skipping jig while maintaining good weedless qualities and hooking the fish correctly. Man, it's just the best of all worlds when it comes to jig fishing. Uh, I think they named it appropriately and I highly, highly recommend that jig. It's a very, very good jig. Okay guys, so right now the wind's kind of making it difficult for me to skip. It keeps bowing my line. This is making it tougher on me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around to the other side of this dock. I'm gonna get on that little shallow part over there, power pole down where the nose of my boat is relatively close. I can be dead silent and skip up under into the dark shade really easily. So let's do that right now. And basically my goal is to hit the deepest, darkest shade in every single corner on this dock. Anywhere there's shade or there's a corner or a line, an edge, I want to get my bait into that. And so right now we've hit the front edge, we've come around this side, we'll go back here and hit this corner. Right there. Fish that back corner, fish a little bit of the walkway. We're going to hit every piece of this dock that we can possibly get a bait into, that's what we're gonna do. And you have to fish every part of it until you get a bite on every dock. So you've gotta go back around the other side and break it down. There's a little corner on this other side. You have to fish every part of it. All right, so we fished every corner of that dock efficiently. We didn't get any bites on that particular dock. Oh, we're gonna move on to this next one. Looks like it might have a little bit even deeper water on it. It's right here in the same line of docks. That dock's right behind us. This is the very next one. So there's a few docks right here. We're gonna go down and fish all these docks on the outside of this, right here in the mouth of this big pocket on this lake. Edge first, edge first, every time. 
Now beans have already gotten made a mistake and kind of gotten close to this one. I'm going to go ahead and do edge and then skip underneath and I'm just going to alternate cast all the way down this dock right here. So that one I skipped underneath, not very gracefully, not my best skip, but it did get underneath there. And then on the next cast, I'll pitch to the edge. And then the next cast after that, I'm going to pitch it up under the dock. Good skip right there. That one got deep. Hey guys, if you want to learn how to skip a jig properly with a bait caster, we'll link that video in the description. Uh, we made some videos about how to skip a jig. We've done a couple of them. So check those out if you're interested in that topic. Well guys, we're not getting any bites off these docks right now, but I'll tell you what, I did fish these docks with my customers this morning on a half day guide trip and we did catch some nice fish off of them. And we may have already kind of fished these dry, but these techniques are the exact techniques that I've used my whole life to catch probably at this point literally millions of, of fish off docks. Uh, they certainly will hold fish really, really consistently when things get tough. And the big key principles to remember is work outside to in and hit every angle and cover every piece of shade that dock offers. Oh, I finally got a bite and I missed him. Y'all saw the rod bend up right there, right? Y'all saw the rod load up. Hey, and that's a classic example of what will happen on most dock bites on your jig. You get it up under there and it'll just be swimming out by the time you pick your slack up. And that's exactly what happened to me. Dadgum it, man. Uh, uh, uh. I wanted to catch one on cue on one of these docks for y'all so bad because there were some fish on these docks I knew there were from this morning. And I uh, wanted to cue one up for you and I messed it up. <laughs> Which we had a lot of that this morning too. I think maybe we're getting some smaller fish and some short strikes or something because we missed several. Uh, we had our fair share of swings and misses this morning. Definite fish bites, fish pulling on the bait, running with the bait, and we just don't hook him up, don't get him in the boat, whatever have you. So. Now I will tell you, you know, I told you guys to pay attention to details. This dock right here that I'm fishing right now, it's behind the camera right now. This was the best dock this morning. And it's the dock, I just got a bite on it right now. And wouldn't you know it, there's two more docks right over there and there's the one dock we fished first. Out of those four docks, this is the only one that has all wood pilings. Little differences in dock fishing can make all the difference in the world, boys. And you've got to notice that, and you've got to notice where every bite comes from. So that bite right there, I mean, I didn't catch him, but that was a good bite. That fish ran out with my bait. That fish came, you know, it makes sense because we're in the hottest part of the day here. But that, that bite came in the deepest, darkest shade back in the dock that I could get to. Right in the center of the darkest shade line this dock has to offer us where that bite came from. So now, as I move on to my next dock, I'm gonna start focusing more and more on those deepest, darkest shaded areas, way up under those docks. So my skipping game's really gonna come into play in this situation. Uh, really gonna have to get up under these docks. So uh, those type of details are what can clue you in and help you move from one dock to the next. So now, if I wanted to pattern this, let's just say I caught another fish doing this right now. If I wanna pattern this, what I need I mean, a, a few docks at the mouth of some creeks and pockets uh, out close to the main lake. And then I need to drive by those and I need to find out which ones have all wood pilings. And once I find out which ones have all wood pilings, I need to get it like I just did that one as far back up under there as I can. And guys, until you're comfortable skipping and pitching, please don't fish around people's gear. See, I'm fishing right next to this, this uh, jet ski right here. If you're not really accurate and really confident in what you're doing, don't throw at people's stuff, man. <laughs> That's how uh, on the water confrontations happen is when you start banging your jig off a of sea -doo. I know they're annoying, but just try to contain yourself. So I'm looking at this shade line right here and I've got a good shade line on this outside portion of the dock. And it happens to be right where the water kind of drops off and gets a little deeper, which I like. But judging on that last bite, that fish was further back. Now this morning, this is where we caught them, right? 
out off the end of this dock out here under this part of the shade uh, but that last one was in that deep dark shade if you can kind of see hopefully that shows up on the camera there's a big difference in the darkness in the shade from right there under that section to right here under this section so let's get a bait back up under this section and see if it doesn't produce all right wanted to go a little bit further right than where i went right there but that's not a bad skip right there that's in there pretty good Well guys, sorry I couldn't catch that fish for you. Really wanted to catch one on cue while we were doing the instructional today. But hey, this is a pattern that is working so well right now. And it will continue to work better and better over the next month or so as we get on into that fall. As these fish are transitioning from summer stuff to fall stuff, these docks are about the best top suns they can find out at the mouth of these creeks. And uh, it is just a great, great pattern. We'll produce a lot of bites on Lake Fork and really all these lakes around here because all these fish are doing the same thing this time of year. Uh, so get out there put these to practice. I certainly hope that today's dock instructional helps you catch more and bigger fish Hey, if you like this video if you have questions about it You want to see a certain topic covered in the weeks going forward Please leave us a comment down below let us know what you thought or what you'd like to see We'd be happy to oblige you as best we can. Hey guys. Thanks for watching If you enjoyed this video be sure you hit that subscribe button turn that notification bell on so you'll never miss another your lake fort guide video And we'll see you guys next time right here on your lake fort guide